Back in mid-2021, Shopify announced the extension of the Shopify CLI to now work with themes, essentially replacing the previous tool of ThemeKit. And so for the last year and a half, Shopify developers have been using the CLI as a tool to serve theme code locally. In my August 2021 tutorial on the Shopify CLI, I covered the benefits of the new themes feature and walked you through a step-by-step -step on how to use it. But then about a year later, Shopify announced the next version of the CLI, and a few months after that, announced that support for themes were now also added to this new version. If you haven't been keeping an eye on the change log, you might have totally missed this update because the 2.0 version is still working to this day, but that might not be for very long. The latest update came on November 9th, 2022, when Shopify announced the 2.0 version of the CLI will sunset on May 31st, 2023. So in this video, I'll cover what's changed in version three of the CLI and how to migrate over to the new version. Let's get started. So of course, the first step, if you're still on the 2.0 version is to run the necessary commands in order to upgrade to version three. For me as a Mac user, it was a simple matter of running brew upgrade Shopify dash CLI. The process took about nine minutes to complete. Afterwards, I ran the command Shopify version and I was able to verify that I was indeed now running version three. Of course, this is for me having homebrew installed and previous to the upgrade being on version 2.1 of the CLI. But for you, you might already have the latest version installed. So it's worth running the command Shopify version just in case. Now that we're all onto version three, the next step is to understand the new commands. To retrieve a list of the theme commands in version three, we can either check the official documentation or run the command Shopify theme from within the CLI itself. The first thing you might notice is that there is no longer a serve command. This command was what we used to run our theme code locally, but it's now been replaced with the command dev, which works in almost the exact same fashion. The big difference here is that you don't need to run a separate command first in order to log into a store. Instead, you add the store flag to the command with the address of the store you wish to log into, hit enter, and as soon as you're authenticated, the CLI will start to serve that theme code. You can see this difference as well as a few others documented here on the official migration guide, and you can see the full list of commands here on this page. For me, it's been about a month since I switched over to version three, and the only things that have really changed on a consistent basis for me have been those minor workflow changes. Using the word dev instead of serve, no longer running Shopify login, and having to write Shopify auth logout instead of Shopify logout when I wanna log out of a store and onto a new one. There are, however, a few features and changes to the other commands that I haven't needed to use just yet, but are perhaps worth mentioning. For example, one of the subtle changes in version three is the path parameter, which allows you to switch the path from the current directory to any path that you specify. This could be handy when it comes to the theme push command in the case that, say for instance, you're compiling your theme code to a nested folder, you could push that instead of your current folder. Another new parameter is the password parameter, which allows developers to use a theme access password instead of having to re-authenticate every 90 minutes. If you remember the theme kit days when you used to generate a password through a private app on the store, well, this is essentially the exact same thing, except nowadays Shopify is encouraging the use of their theme access app to generate the password instead. Just a note here that the password parameter doesn't work on the theme dev command on some versions of version three as it was rolled out a little later. So if you want to use that particular feature, you might have to upgrade to an even higher version of version three. I upgraded from 3.25 to 3.33 and that seemed to do the trick. Finally, one huge feature that could be useful to some of you is the continuous integration slash continuous deployment integration. If you have no idea what I'm talking about here, then this feature likely won't concern you, but the classic example here is if you wanted to trigger a GitHub action when you push to a certain branch, well, you can now set that up in this new version of the CLI. I'd say for most of you watching, version three of the CLI is not going to be too much to get used to. 
I encourage everyone who's migrating right now to just simply check out the table of workflow changes on the documentation. And once you internalize those, it should be easy to adapt to the new changes. Well, that's all for today's video. If you learned something new today, please give this video a thumbs up, subscribe if you're new here, and I'll see you on the next video.